Crown uh, brought really irrelevant evidence, was asking him, uh, asking Pastor Stevens on, on cross-examination, all sorts of irrelevant questions as to his beliefs about uh, COVID-19, the pandemic and government. Um, and uh, Judge Fradsham was having none of it, so found uh, Pastor Stevens not guilty. Pastor Tim Stevens was acquitted on Tuesday of charges of breach of public health orders. Now, Pastor Stevens first came onto the radar of Alberta Health Services authorities and Calgary police after refusing to restrict his congregation to comply with provincial COVID restrictions on places of worship. Pastor Stevens spent a combined 21 days in jail and was served with six separate charges of breaching health orders. Four tickets were dropped previously, and Tuesday he was acquitted on charges of violating health restrictions requiring physical distancing in his church. Now, the government has obviously uh, turned up the heat on churches, trying to discourage them from gathering together. I think they don't understand that Christians are committed to follow the Lord Jesus Christ regardless of the consequences. Now, the Calgary pastor of Fairview Baptist Church was first arrested on May 16th, 2021 for allegedly violating the terms of an Alberta Health Services injunction brought against a completely unrelated third party, Chris Scott of the Whistle Stop Cafe in Mirror, Alberta. Now, that order restricted Scott's right to protest COVID restrictions that closed his business. Stevens was held on that for three days in the Calgary Remand Centre before his release. You know, you have people praying for you, as you know, all across the country, the continent, the world. appreciate the stand that you've taken, and um, yeah, I'm just really appreciative of what you've done, and we're all praying for you. Then Pastor Stevens was arrested again on June 14th, 2021, for having allegedly conducted an outdoor church service violating a court order. Police vehicles arrived and put him in a car, taking him away from his families. It was an extremely emotional and harrowing ordeal, and we were there to capture it as it happened. A statement issued by the Justice Centre for Constitutional Freedoms read, We are pleased that the court has acquitted Pastor Stevens on the charges of not complying with a public health order. Pastor Stevens was illegally arrested and imprisoned for having allegedly violated the public health orders, which have since been shown to be ineffective and harmful. This decision sets the record straight about the justifiability of his actions and about the importance of respecting charter rights and freedoms. Now, joining me to break down the win for common sense and religious freedoms is someone who has been helping another pastor in trouble for years. Sarah Miller from JSS Barristers is the longtime lawyer of Calgary's renegade pastor, Archer Poloski, who was first ticketed by the health regime here in Alberta for feeding the homeless, what the government at the time labeled an illegal public gathering. And Archer's troubles spiraled from there, eventually being arrested in several wild takedowns and held multiple times in jail for breaching court orders that would prevent gatherings and force Archer to allow inspectors into his church during services. Art was held for weeks in jail for giving a sermon to truckers at the Coots Alberta border blockade, something the government called interfering with critical infrastructure. Take a listen to Sarah Miller's analysis. Pastor Stevens was uh, ticketed for breach of public health acts back uh, in uh, the summer of 20, I, I believe 2020 uh, and 2021. It's hard to recall every uh, aspect of his offenses because they were um, so many of them and so many of them have resolved in his favor. Um, as he's, you know, indicated, uh, he spent, I believe, 21 days in jail related to all of these different offenses. Um, they've all been concluding in his favor. And most recently, yesterday, uh, Judge Fradsham of the Provincial Court of Alberta issued a, a very well-reasoned decision regarding um, the Public Health Act, the CMOH orders, and um, how we're supposed to interpret those and what the burden is on the Crown to seek a conviction. So um, these are strict liability offenses, the same as a traffic ticket. And so that means if the Crown can prove that the, the act was done, your only defense is um, essentially due diligence. 
uh, and the Crown could not prove that uh, Pastor Stevens had uh, violated the CMOH orders. Uh, they were uh, leading evidence regarding uh, the congregation and what the congregation was doing. That's, um, you know, they didn't ticket the congregation, of course, they didn't ticket those individuals. They decided to ticket Pastor Stevens and they failed to focus their evidence on Pastor Stevens and what Pastor Stevens was doing. So um, Judge Fredson was really clear that uh, there was no way to find a conviction in, in that instance. Um, the CMLH orders uh, this. Um, as far as we're aware of, there's not been any uh, real success on these. And that's not to say that you can't impose uh, CMOH orders that restrict certain movement, but like all legislative acts in government, they have to be clear, they have to be uh, consistent, you have to be able to know on the face of them what they mean and what they don't mean. Um, and the Crown bears the burden of proof to show that an actual offence has occurred. So we've not had, unfortunately, yet any constitutional uh, arguments on this. This is all just what actually happened those days that the Crown is focused on. And the Crown uh, brought really irrelevant evidence, was asking him, uh, asking Pastor Stevens on, on cross-examination, all sorts of irrelevant questions as to his beliefs about uh, COVID-19, the pandemic and government. Um, and uh, Judge Fradsham was having none of it, so found uh, Pastor Stevens not guilty. So what does this mean for clients like yours, like Pastor Art Polosky? Is this good news for your client? Well, I mean, I would, I, I think it's good news in the sense that it shows that the courts um, are going, are looking at these fairly. What we have is a very fortunate circumstance where we have a really strong uh, criminal uh, bench where they are dealing with criminal offenses. They understand the burden of proof. They understand the role of the crown and they understand uh, statutory interpretation. So um, in Calgary and Alberta, we have a great criminal bench that really gets uh, the, the analysis here. And so I think in that sense, it is really good news for, for people who continue to have outstanding tickets like uh, Pastor Pavlowski because it shows that the bench is going to apply the law appropriately and the standards of proof appropriately. Um, that said, these tickets that Pastor Stevens was facing, um, and again, I wasn't his lawyer, but I've read the decision, I'm aware of his case. Uh, these uh, tickets that he was facing are from a different CMOH order under different pretenses, uh, different allegations. Um, so they're, they're not, um, the, they're not the, the same, right? They're going, it's going to be slightly different legal analysis. Uh, if we uh, do ever conclude uh, Pastor Pavlowski's trial. Yeah, I'm um, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would hope that the Crown prosecutor after having three days of trial and seeing um, how poorly her evidence came out and taking another look at what the CMOH order says um, would use their prosecutorial discretion to discontinue, um, to stay the matter, to, to withdraw the ticket. Um, you know, I've, I've requested that obviously multiple times, uh, since, uh, frankly, since December of 2020, uh, when he was first ticketed, or I should say January, 2021, when he actually received the ticket. Um, and we've not made any headway on that, uh, but I remain hopeful that the crown prosecutions, uh, has the discretion and they will utilize it appropriately in this manner not to proceed but we do have three more days of trial scheduled for December at this point so we'll see if those proceed. Sarah has been helping Archer at no cost to him for the better part of two and a half years thanks to your tax deductible donations to savearcher.com. Sarah's expertise has secured major victories for Archer including having multiple tickets tossed aside and an extreme gag order lifted. Rebel News is petitioning the new Alberta Premier Daniel Smith to keep her word to end COVID prosecutions to sign the petition and send her a friendly email reminding her of her promise. Please visit LockdownAmnesty.com. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. To send a friendly message reminding our new freedom-loving Premier Daniel Smith of her promise to end the lockdown prosecutions, please visit LockdownAmnesty.com.